Hello. Hello there. I'm, uh, I'm John Heath. I'm really excited to be here um, uh, for the feast. I'm really excited to be uh, a part of today and, uh, and represent Trebani. Um, so that's, that's me. Again, if I haven't said it three times already, um, that, that's me. Um, so today, um, I'm going to tell you, um, hopefully during our break, um, you got to taste some Chobani. Uh, hopefully, uh, Chobani, the product, you got a, you got a chance to, uh, to, to try us. And hopefully, uh, a lot of you guys know us. Um, but what I wanted to do is help you understand uh, the story of Chobani a little bit, to help you understand why um, we're here today and why we're, we're so um, excited to be a part of the health challenge and sponsor uh, the health challenge. Um, Chobani was founded by uh, Hamdi, Hamdi Ulikaya, um, in 2005. Um, he came to the United States at the age of 24 um, from Turkey. Um, he came here to learn English, um, start a new life, um, and uh, he started at, at SUNY Albany in upstate New York. Um, through the years, he uh, observed um, our uh, food landscape, the options that were available to consumers. And his observation was, you know, it wasn't that great options weren't available to consumers. Um, they just weren't widely available to consumers. So the access to good food um, was for the few, not for the many. So the, the founding insight and observation still exists today. Consumers have great tastes, right? They just need better options. And the mission of Chobani is to provide better options to our consumers. Um, for us, we, we launched Chobani, right? So uh, he decided that we can do a better yogurt, something that was all natural, free of preservatives, um, and available to everybody. And what guided the original uh, uh, brand and, and, and product of, of Chobani still guides the way that we in innovation um, for the rest of our company, we, we uh, um, have the same principles today. All the products that we create need to be delicious, nutritious, natural, and so important that they're available to everyone. And when you think about Chobani and the original launch um, and, and going to market, um, Chobani didn't go to specialty stores. We first went to mass retail, uh, very much because we wanted it to be available to everyone. And um, in thinking about the, the word Chobani, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it means shepherd. And when I first met Hamdi, I said, oh, shepherd, that means protecting, right? Protect your flock. Because in America, it's as a very kind of protective uh, type of meaning. And he, said, and he corrected me. He's like, no, in, in Mediterranean, in the Mediterranean and Turkish kind of uh, culture, the concept of a shepherd is a little different. The concept of a shepherd is to give without the thought of receiving. It's a really, really positive word. So at the core of our brand, at the core of our company, um, is access and trying to bring better things to more people. So in thinking about the health challenge today, Ryan's going to come up and, and talk more uh, about the specific challenge. Um, for Chobani, we recognize that we're a part uh, of a consumer's lives, and we play a big role in a consumer's lives. But we also recognize that we're not the only answer. Right? We're one of many answers for, for a consumer as it relates to their health and well-being. During your challenge today, you're going to explore lots of things around the whys, the what's, the how, how people are eating, when they're eating things, right? You're also going to explore uh, activities, rituals, and habits that these consumers have and try to understand how you can intersect these consumers uh, and help them along their journey. But what we also hope that you uh, take into effect and really think about are some of the deeper motivations behind uh, the behaviors of our consumers. Um, some of the deeply held beliefs, and ultimately the readiness that they have uh, for the larger journey. Hamdi, uh, we have a, a store down in Soho, um, at the Chobani Cafe. And Hamdi likes to go there a lot. When he's in town, he's, uh, he's always in the cafe. 
And uh, there, was a, there was a woman that was there one day, saw that he was there, and went right up to him and said, Hamdi, I just, I'm so excited uh, about Chobani. I love your product. Um, and at that time, she had a, a Chobani in her hand. And she was telling him a story of her own journey in terms of getting herself to a more healthful place, losing weight, getting to a better diet. And she held it up to him and just said, Chobani reminds me to be good to myself every day. And she looked forward to that, uh, that, that yogurt every single day. And for her, that was really powerful. And what's so interesting about what she said is that it was, it was not necessarily about perfection. And she was just trying to do better things every day. And internally, uh, we have a saying that, that describes this concept that we talk about often. Um, it's about one better. It's not about holistic change. It's about putting better things in your life. And what we've noticed uh, at different uh, grocery stores around the country is there's been this really big shift in the last five years. Um, consumers, they'll have their candy bars once in a while, their indulgences, right? Because we're human, right? But what they're starting to do is, is change the composition of what they're buying. So they're putting better things in their grocery baskets and they're taking, let's say, worse things out of their grocery baskets. Um, again, it's not a reset button, but they're changing. Um, and while the concept of one better for everybody in this room, I'm sure is a very simple concept, right? Put better things in, take better things out. Uh, for a consumer and for the mass consumer, um, it's a lot harder than it sounds. So I have six observations that I wanted to share with you that I hope um, will be helpful as you go into the, uh, the health challenge today. Um, the first one is about navigating better. There are so many choices for our consumers, so many. And uh, the, the reading ingredients is, is even difficult for me to be quite honest, uh, and I know a lot about food. So for the average consumer, navigating what is better and what is not better is very difficult. Um, I also put down that you know, certain marketers, um, the way that they uh, create their packages, the way that they put copy and other kind of things and they flag out on, on, their, on, their, on their packages are sometimes deceiving for, for a consumer. Um, so it, it's really difficult a lot of times for a consumer to understand what is better and what is not. Starting point for a consumer is different, right? Uh, you're going you're gonna to meet Colin a little bit later on. Um, he's an Olympic athlete. He's an amazing guy. Um, his starting point for, for a better life is a little bit different than mine. Uh, I like to think I try to eat better, but I know that he eats a lot better than I do. Um, but it's, it's really important to take into the fact that everybody's starting their journey from a different place, right? And then also, when you think about different categories, I think yogurt is a really, really great example um, of that there's better and even better. So the yogurt, a big challenge for us is that the yogurt category is a better category, right? For, for a lot of consumers, they say, oh, that's, that's, it's yogurt, right? That's good for you. But within yogurt, there are varying degrees of even better products. And that's hard for a consumer to really get their heads wrapped around. Better is a journey and not a destination. I've done a lot of work in smoking cessation, so getting people to help them to, to, to quit smoking. And I, I think of this in a, in a very similar way. It, that it's, it's, a, it's a journey that people are on. You know, when you're trying to quit smoking, you fail a lot, right? And it's all about getting back on track. It's all about getting um, you know, back on track and, and making sure that you're, you stay on that journey and don't fall off track. Um, and again, taking the, uh, the smoking cessation uh, example here, um, I notice a lot with consumers that um, uh, I, I've done a lot of research with them with, with smoking cessation. They say, you know that gum, you know that patch, that pill, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work. I've tried it. But what's so interesting is that they put so much emphasis on the actual product and they sometimes take themselves out of the equation. So I think it's up to us to figure out how 
we can integrate the consumer into the journey itself and make sure that they, they personalize this. And last, um, it's really uh, important for us all. We, you know, we all have an impetus for change, right? You have a bad visit with your doctor. Um, if you have a friend or a family member that has a health crisis in some ways, that becomes your impetus for change. Um, but it's important as we think about our consumers and about this health challenge is that we're careful that we're not hitting the reset button or encouraging consumers to hit the reset button. Because a lot of times when you hit that reset button, you're in a whole different zone and you're not evolving your life, you're totally revolutionizing your life. And a lot of times a revolution leads to failure. So encouraging consumers to evolve what they're doing, again, in the concept of one better, versus uh, completely change uh, what they do. So that's what I had. Again, thank you so much for, for having us a part of, of today and really look forward to uh, the health challenge. Thank you.